In this video, I wanted to briefly take everyone through just starting to work with some generators, but also external elements that, although it's important to understand how to write code from scratch, there may be times that from a workflow standpoint, it's easier to go through and actually use different types of generators. And these are things that as you continue on throughout working with different types of web design and development elements, that you may be working with libraries or predefined layouts that you'll have to go through and familiarize yourself with. One of the things this week that I included as far as whenever we're talking about borders and outlining is the MDN Mozilla documentation includes two types of generators for you. One for as far as working with the box shadow CSS effect, but also to the border image generator. The one I'm going to focus on in this lecture here is the box shadow generator. Very often it can be really easy uh, to just kind of ignore the different types of effects. However, what can be very helpful and also what doesn't make you any less of a web developer is the ability to go in and kind of use a generator such as this to get the correct code and get your outline how you like it. Instead of being stuck having to sit there and refresh and keep changing numbers, you can get your element the exact way you want it and then you can just pull in the code. So if I actually scroll down here, you can see the specific element pieces that you would need right now. So just to take you through and demo as far as using a generator like this, I'm going to add a shadow element to it. And you can see already here, it's giving me that little preview. And also, you can see that the box shadow has changed. And I've gotten an additional asset kind of positioned in here. So that's going to be one of my big things that I'm going to need to pay attention to. So let's go ahead. Maybe I change the color here. Uh, I change as far as how see-through it is. Maybe I change the overall blur, make it a little bit wider, and I maybe make it so that it looks like it's coming down from the left. And as you can see as I work on this, it's changing all of those different elements there. Now the thing is though, like if I come into Atom, and if I take a look at, for instance, like my table of contents here, as far as this element is concerned, as far as the page goes, I know that for the table of contents, we were using the class TOC. So I'm going to have to think about, OK, how do I want to actually get this imported in? Well, if I go back and look at what I generated here, really the big thing that changed was setting up that box shadow declaration for myself. So if I just come in and I do a copy, I can already see the preview up here of what I think it's going to look like. And this allows me to come back into Atom. And under my TOC here, if I do a paste, and then we do a save, notice over in my web page now, you can see that the effect appeared immediately there. So now I have this nice shadow effect. Again, I wanted to demonstrate this and talk to all of you about this just because Sometimes it can seem like whenever you're first starting out with web design and development that you have to write everything by hand by yourself. And that's not always the case. If something's going to make it easier and quicker for you to actually go and do and generate your web pages, there's really no reason not to use it. So again, don't be shy away from these type of generators. They give you a quick preview option that you can work with and then as long as you know what to pull in, so for instance, again, we wanted the box shadow element. You can attach it into your own HTML code, making your workflow a little bit faster.